Hi, I am Dr. Suman Bairagoda, Consultant Musculoskeletal Oncosurgeon at Majumdar Shah Medical Center, Narayana Health City. So first, what is this musculoskeletal oncology? So musculoskeletal oncology is a niche specialty which deals with bone tumors which can be benign or cancer, soft tissue tumors again benign or cancer and metastatic disease metastatic disease in the sense tumor from the lung or kidney if it's pressed to the bone so that bone part or bone treatment is taken care by us so today let's discuss about the treatment and management of bone cancer so what we need to remember is there are only three bone cancers which we see uh, commonly in our practice the first one is the osteosarcoma which is common in age group between 10 to 30 years so the treatment for osteosarcoma is first we have to start a chemotherapy chemotherapy is injectable medicines which kills the microscopic cells which are in the blood and also reduces the tumor size and thus makes the surgery more easy so this chemotherapy goes for three months after three months we do the surgery where we remove the only affected part of the bone that is the cancer part of the bone and save the limb and further we need to give chemotherapy for another four to five months so these chemotherapies are given once in a week or once in two weeks based on the drug and the regimen what we follow then coming to Ewing sarcoma so this cancer is commonly seen in an age group between 10 to 20 years so the treatment of Ewing sarcoma is same as osteosarcoma where we start chemotherapy those are the injectable cancer killing uh, medicines that will go for three months then we have to do surgery to take out the cancer bone and then again we have to give chemotherapy for another four to five months one thing about Ewing sarcoma these tumors respond very well for radiotherapy so we can use it additional with surgery to, to get a good response and sometimes if the tumor is in spine or pelvis where the surgery is going to be complex we can just treat with the radiotherapy without doing surgery and the next variety of bone cancer what we see in our practice is chondrosarcoma which is seen in age group after 40 years so the treatment of chondrosarcoma is only the surgical removal of the tumor because this cancer does not respond to chemotherapy or radiotherapy so now coming to the surgical part of this bone cancer so let's divide this surgical part of bone cancer into two division the first part is removing the tumor and second part is reconstructing the defect which happens after removing the tumor so now about removing the tumor how we should remove and how the surgery is done so always when we operate a bone tumor we operate in such a way that we take out the entire bone in one piece okay and it should be covered by normal soft tissue all around so that we call it as wide local excision and that is the ideal way of removing any bone tumor if you remove the bone tumor by piecemeal means in multiple pieces there is high chance that the cancer is going to come back and if it comes back the patient will lose his leg or hand and there is high chance that when it comes back it can spread to the other part of the body so it's always important to get the treatment done by a surgeon who is specialized or trained in operating this bone cancer uh, bone cancers so once we take out the tumor the so next uh, work is to reconstruct because if we take out this tumor until unless we do some reconstruction then the patient won't be able to walk so let's discuss about the reconstruction options so there are two way uh, ways of uh, reconstruction uh, what we do in our regular practice the first one is called as non-biological reconstruction so non-biological as the word says it is using a non-living organ uh, our material to reconstruct that defect so the most common material what we use to reconstruct uh, the bone tumor in non-biological is using this artificial metallic bone so here is an example where there was tumor this is the thigh bone 
this is the leg bone so imagine the tumor was in the lower part of the thigh bone so this part of the thigh bone is excised completely that by wide local excision and the amount of bone what we have removed is replaced using this artificial metallic bone so this metallic bone will have a stem like this that will go into the remaining part of the bone and will be attached to the leg bones and that's how it moves and that's how it works so one more example so uh, tumor of the leg bone upper part of the leg bone you can see that tumor has been removed and we have replaced that part of the bone by using this artificial metallic bone so same here so the stem goes into the leg bone and the stem goes into the femoral bone and that's how the knee functions so this is the artificial metallic bone which i am talking about so this is the metallic bone which we use to replace the lower part of the thigh bone so this the advantage of using this artificial metallic bone is they comes in segments they are modular implants so we can just, just like building block we can resect and reconstruct how much we want based on the amount of reconstruction i have done so we can just need to add this piece and i can increase the length to 15 to 20 30 centimeter based on the amount of tumor what we have removed so by doing this we can replace the entire length of this thigh bone that we call it as total femur replacement if the tumor is involved in the entire length of the thigh bone and in similar way we can replace the entire length of the humerus that's the arm bone if the tumor is involved by using this artificial metallic bone the other advantages of this artificial metallic bone is because the weight is completely taken up by this metallic bone we can make the patient walk immediately from next day after the surgery and also we can start the joint movement for example here the knee movement immediately after the surgery the other advantage of using this artificial metallic bone is for example as i told you osteosarcoma and ewing sarcomas are common in pediatric age group and we know children grow so if you put a regular metallic implant like this the operated leg may become short compared to the normal leg so for that we have a specially designed implants called as expandable implants which can grow with the patient age so patient won't have any difference in the length, uh, length of the leg so that we call it as expandable implants so this expandable implants are placed in the patient body and once in three to four months they are just the leg is kept in a magnetic coil for five minutes and leg is lengthened for one to two millimeters which does not require any surgery and it's absolutely pain free which hardly takes five to ten minutes but what is the disadvantage of using this metallic bone so the disadvantage of using metallic bone is these metallic bones have life there is no metallic bone which can come for entire life so based on the company and the design uh, and the amount of bone we resect the life varies so usually uh, for a decent implant the average life is around 10 to 15 years after 10 to 15 years if the implant become loose we need to replace the implant and put a new artificial metallic bone in those patients so that's about non-biological reconstruction so next option what we have to do reconstruction is biological reconstruction so what is biological reconstruction as the name says here we are using a living material to reconstruct the defect what we have created for example if you imagine this as a tumor which is involved in the thigh part of the bone we'll operate cut it from here and above cut it from here take this bone out and we sterilize this bone sterilize in the sense there are various various methods we use those methods to kill all the cells including the cancer cells and tumor cells and put that bone back in this place and fix with the help of plates and screws so this is known as sterilization of tumor bone so it's very safe it kills all the cancer cells and normal cells 
and we can retain patient's own bone. That is the biggest disadvantage in this procedure. We are retaining the patient's own bone and once it heals to the upper part of the bone and the lower part of the bone, it almost becomes like a normal bone and patient will be able to do all the activities and unlike metallic bone, once it heals, this bone does not require any replacement. So this will last for life long. So that is the biggest advantage of doing this procedure. So what are the various way to sterilize this tumor bone? So there are three important techniques what we use to sterilize this bone. Once we take out this bone, we put it in a sterile box and give high dose radiation of 50 degrees. That procedure is known as extracorporeal radiotherapy. That's the most commonly used procedure. And the second procedure is the bone is dipped in liquid nitrogen, which is at my temperature of minus 190 degrees. That will kill all the tumor cells. And the third option available is we boil the bone at 60 degrees using, using like a pressure cooker and that will kill all the cells and we put back that bone into the same place and fix it. So what is the disadvantage of this procedure? So this advantage of this procedure is until the bone heals to the upper part of the bone and the lower part of the bone, we can't make the patient put weight on this leg. We can make them walk with the help of crutches and walk walker, but until it unites, they cannot put weight on that leg. Once it unites, they can put weight on the leg and they can do all the activities which they used to be, uh, do before this particular disease. So that is the most common method what we use, the biological method we use for reconstruction. So we are, uh, the science has evolved so much and uh, we also have improved uh, significantly in the treatment of bone and soft tissue uh, tumors. So the newer technique what we are using in present day is uh, 3D reconstruction. So what is 3D reconstruction? So in this case, what we do, we get CT scan and MRI of the patient. And with the help of our engineers, we can recreate a model of patient bone and the tumor, which will be the exact size and shape of the patient uh, bone and the tumor. So what is the advantage is, so that gives actually a 3D view to the tumor, its location and its relation to the bone and other important structures. So this helps to plan the surgery much better and helps to save the um, lot of normal bone. So and also helps to take out the tumor completely. So the advantage is we are removing the tumor completely and we are saving more amount of bone and the, there will be better functional outcome compared to when we don't use this procedure. So this is a case. So there's a tumor involved in the pelvic bone. So this is a tumor. You can see a huge tumor of almost football size involving the pelvic bone. So we can know with this model that where the tumor is starting and where it's stopping. So based on this, we can plan the procedure and we can execute it. So there is one more case. A small 13 year old uh, child had tumor in his thigh bone. So you can see his thigh bone is so small. So we got this 3D reconstruction and model of his thigh bone and we got plate which exactly fits into this small bone. Otherwise we don't get such small plates. So because of this 3D reconstruction we could get a plate which exactly fits into tumor size and we could save and we had actually removed the entire length of the thigh bone saving only the upper part and lower part and this bone was recycled and we put it back and fixed with the special customized plate which we got for this uh, patient. So these 3D reconstruction and jigs are quite useful uh, for both patient as well as for surgeons to plan the surgery and to execute and to give a better functional as well as oncological outcome. So coming to these surgeries, so, so this limb salvage surgery uh, in bone tumors, they are quite complex they are major surgeries usually surgeries last from almost four hours to ten hours it requires a big team uh, to do the surgery and not only surgery you we need a good support before the surgery 
uh, during surgery with the help of our anesthesia team and the ICU team to take care of the patient post surgery and good nursing and physiotherapy team to take care of the patient even during the rehabilitation uh, phase. So it's a teamwork. So we should have a good team to get a good outcome. So now I told about limb salvage surgery. Now condition where we cannot save the limb. What are, what are the conditions where we cannot save the limb? So condition where we cannot save the limb is if the tumor is very big, uh, where we know that we cannot take it out completely, there we have to do amputation, that is cutting the hand or leg. Second, if biopsy is not done properly, an open surgery has been done for the biopsy where the cells uh, spreads to the surrounding areas, so patient may land up with amputation. And third, if the bone fractures during the treatment or before the treatment, there is high chance that the cancer can spread in and around and some of these patients may end up with amputation. So that's why it's very, very important to get evaluated and even get a biopsy from a proper trained orthopedic oncosurgeon and get a treatment in a specialized cancer center where we have all these facilities to take care of the uh, patients. So thank you so much.